Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room as we continue our coverage this evening and into the early hours of Saturday of the return of three crew members from the International Outpost. At this hour here in Mission Control, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on console overseeing the activities of the uh, Expedition 70, soon to be Expedition 71 crew on board the International Space Station. This team is led the, this evening by Flight Director Fiona Antkoviak. She is joined on console by Flight Director Elias Mirmo. To their right is spacecraft communicator Aki Hoshide from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, a Soyuz veteran in his own right, here to talk uh, when required to the station crew still on board the Expedition 70 crew on board the station, as well as to provide additional insight as the Soyuz MS-24 is preparing to come home to bring back to Earth NASA's Laurel O'Hara, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilovskaya. Across uh, the ocean, at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov, outside of Moscow, Russian flight controllers who are in control of tonight's operation of the Soyuz MS-24 are watching over their consoles and their data as we are just about 20 minutes away from the physical separation of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. About uh, 45 minutes ago, leak checks uh, were completed on uh, both uh, the Soyuz and Rosviet side of the docking interface, as well as leak checks uh, that were successfully completed uh, for the three crew members who are strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz spacecraft, leak checks to their Sokol launch and entry suits. All of the Soyuz systems are in excellent shape, ready to begin the journey home for the trio for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. That landing scheduled at 2.17 a.m. Central Time, 3.17 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 12.17 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan. We'll talk more about that in a minute. The three crew members coming home uh, this evening into the early morning hours of Saturday, as you see in this uh, picture, Oleg Novitsky strapped into the center seat of the descent module as the Soyuz commander. To his right is NASA's Laurel O'Hara, and to Novitsky's left, Marina Vasilevskaya. She has flown uh, for the past two weeks to the International Space Station under an intergovernmental agreement between Roscosmos and Belarus to conduct uh, research and experiments on behalf of Belarusian researchers. For Laurel O'Hara, she is in the home stretch of a 204-day mission in space and aboard the International Space Station, a mission that upon landing will have completed 3,264 orbits of the Earth, a mission spanning 86.5 million statute miles. For Novitsky and Vasilevskaya, they are wrapping up 14 days in space, 12 days aboard the station. They will have completed 224 orbits of the Earth, for Novitsky and Vasilevskaya, that is a mission just under 6 million miles in uh, duration and travel. Novitsky is completing the fourth flight of his career, uh, which will have uh, encompassed 545 days in space. Almost three hours ago, the uh, departing trio of O'Hara, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya, as you see here in this uh, video replay, gathered at the hatchway between the Rosviet module and the uh, Soyuz MS-24. They bid goodbye to their station colleagues and uh, one by one floated on board the uh, Soyuz spacecraft to begin leak checks at the docking interface between Soyuz and Rosviet which is at the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. Oleg Kononenko that you see in the green shirt, uh, the space station commander, wiped down the circumference of the uh, hatch interface between Rosviet and Soyuz before he closed the hatch on his side of the uh, docking interface. Just a couple of minutes later, at 7.45 p.m. Central Time, 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time, the Soyuz hatch closed. 
and that uh, set the stage for the beginning of leak checks on both sides of the docking interface that uh, will uh, be the precursor to the actual undocking of the Soyuz from Rosviet just a few minutes from now. With the uh, hatches closed, the crew uh, su suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits and prepared uh, for their landing. This is the map and the trajectory that the Soyuz will take from southwest and northeast, with their target being a landing site on the desolate steppe of Kazakhstan at uh, 2.17 a.m. Central Time, 3.17 a.m. Eastern Time. The landing site located about 91 statute miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. At this hour, a Russian Antonov-26 transport plane carrying members of the Roscosmos, NASA, and search and recovery teams is en route from the staging city of Karaganda that you see to the northeast of the landing site down to Jezkazgan, where the team will board helicopters at the time of the deorbit burn that is scheduled just about two hours and 47 minutes from now. There'll be a leaving in uh, a flotilla of six Russian Mi-8 helicopters for the landing site, about a 35-minute journey from Jezkazgan to the landing site, where they will arrive in a circular racetrack pattern around the zone of the landing, awaiting uh, to see that uh, large main parachute under which the descent module of the Soyuz vehicle will be hanging just a few minutes before it touches down to complete this mission. The undocking uh, begins in this animation, as uh, you see, about uh, 16 and a half minutes from now. Springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off, allowing the Soyuz to depart the station. The deorbit burn is next up on the docket at 1.23 and 53 seconds a.m. Central Time. This will be a four minute, 41 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engines, a braking maneuver to allow the Soyuz to slip out of orbit. 23 minutes after the deorbit burn, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz will take place. The descent module, where the crew uh, is strapped into their seats, will begin its entry into the Earth's atmosphere. And then about 15 minutes before touchdown, there'll be a, a series of commands to open up a series of parachutes, first an extraction chute, then a drogue chute, and then the main parachute. The uh, Next few minutes, uh, as the Soyuz descends to the landing site, will culminate with soft landing engines firing about one to two seconds above the surface of Kazakhstan, a final braking maneuver, and the Soyuz MS-24 will be home. We are in a period of uh, loss of signal through our tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll uh, regain our downlink uh, capability and voice communication with both the Soyuz and station crew members in about nine minutes, about six minutes before the actual undocking of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module. Novitsky and Vasilevskaya launched on March 23rd to the International Space Station on a 34-orbit, two-day journey that resulted in a docking to the Prishal module right next door to where the Soyuz MS-24 is located. Uh, they launched with NASA's Tracy Dyson on the Soyuz MS-25. Dyson's ride home in September will be with Station Commander Ale Kononenko and Roscosmos cosmonaut Nikolai Chub, who will be wrapping up a full year in space Dyson a six-month mission. So if you want to call it that, Novitsky and Vasilevskaya basically consist of a taxi crew bringing a fresh Soyuz up to the International Space Station and uh, the ticket home for Laurel O'Hara. Once uh, the landing is complete, the search and recovery teams and RSC Energia personnel will uh, begin the process of extracting the crew members one by one from the 
uh, descent module of the Soyuz. They'll be placed in chairs alongside the capsule to allow themselves a few minutes of uh, regaining uh, equilibrium okay. after their time on orbit before they are brought into a nearby inflatable medical tent for initial medical tests and to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing. Then they'll be brought uh, one by one into three awaiting helicopters that will uh, fly them back to the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan. O'Hara, once there, will board a NASA plane for the trip back to Houston, while Novitsky and Vasilevskaya will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for the flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. This is a very busy time for the International Space Station, basically flourishing amidst a plethora of operational activity. Oleg, you are the, uh, to, to the space station, uh, the after command. this operation is complete on is Saturday command? morning, next up the command? will be a, a Russian spacewalk oh, scheduled okay. for April 25th by Kononenko and Nikolai Chub. That will be followed in short order the next day on April 26th by the scheduled undocking of the SpaceX CRS-30 cargo craft from the zenith port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. That sets the stage then a few days later for the undocking and redocking of the Crew-8 uh, Dragon spacecraft with Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Alexander Grabenkin, and Jeanette Epps on board for about a 40-minute spin around the block to relocate from the forward port of the Harmony module to the zenith port just vacated by the Dragon cargo craft, they will redock oh, to that zenith port. That will open up the forward port of Harmony in turn for the arrival in early May of the Boeing Starliner craft on the crew flight test mission of Barry Wilmore and Sonny Williams. The Starliner craft completed its fueling down at the Cape earlier today, and so preparations are in full force for the uh, launch atop an Atlas V rocket of the Boeing Starliner craft currently targeted for the evening of May 6th. Countdown clocks are ticking backward here in Mission Control to the command that will begin uh, the uh, procedures to undock the Soyuz MS-24 from the Rossviet module just under nine minutes from now. This will be about a 90-second uh, procedure to enable springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another and allow the uh, Soyuz uh, to physically separate from Rossviet. Three minutes after that, the Soyuz uh, will conduct an eight-second burn of its engines, a separation maneuver, if you will, that will occur at 10.57 p.m. Central Time, the first of two such burns. The next one after that, a minute and 20 seconds later, a 15-second burn to increase an opening rate for the Soyuz from the International Space Station. The deorbit burn that will begin uh, the journey out of low Earth orbit for the Soyuz is scheduled at 1.23 and 53 seconds a.m. Central Time on Saturday, 2.23.53 a.m. Eastern Time. That will be a 4-minute, 41-second retrograde burn to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit for its descent back to the Earth's atmosphere. selected.
Command E2 has been sent. Copy. In the final minutes here before undocking, this is the graphic showing the current configuration of all of the vehicles at the International Space Station. You see at the bottom of your screen the Soyuz MS-24. In just a few minutes, it will separate from the station with O'Hara, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya on board. So the Soyuz MS-24 will depart, leaving Soyuz MS-25 at the parking place right next door, docked to the Prashal node module. And again, that MS-25 spacecraft will be the ride home in September for NASA's Tracy Dyson, Ale Kononenko, the station commander, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Nikolai Chub. Kononenko, by the way, uh, is approaching a milestone on June 4th, already the record holder for most days in space by a human being. Kononenko will surpass 1,000 days in space on this, his fifth space flight. Inhibit is in. Maneuver in work. Just six minutes away from the issuance of the undocking command that uh, will enable Laurel O'Hara to leave uh, the home that has been hers since last uh, September 15th when she launched with uh, Kononenko and Chub on Soyuz MS-24. Novitsky and Vasilevskaya about to bid farewell to the station as well as they begin the road home to a landing, a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. For the flash, for the floodlight. Copy. At the time of physical separation, the Expedition 70 increment on board the station will conclude and Expedition 71 will begin. We've activated the floodlight. On the display, we've put in the command in audible. Okay, copy. Command is in. Yeah, 2 is not illuminated, F-16 is not illuminated, copy. At 1.30, let's activate SSB. And having regained our view copy. from external cameras on the International Space Station, there's the Soyuz MS-24 poised to begin its departure. Less than four minutes away now from the undocking command. Just to the right on your screen of the Soyuz MS-24 is the Northrop Grumman Cygnus spacecraft, the cargo-carrying vehicle that uh, launched to the International Space Station back in January. At the moment, uh, the International Space Station is flying 260 miles over southwestern China, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. And again, uh, as uh, the undocking uh, is about to commence, the uh, NASA Roscosmos Search and Recovery Forces belonging to Rosaviatsa, that whole landing team is airborne in a Russian Antonov 26 aircraft heading uh, to the intermediary staging site of Jezkazgan, about 90 miles from the landing site. In Jezkazgan, uh, that team will board uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters for about a 35-minute flight to the landing zone 
awaiting the arrival of the descent module of the Soyuz and its three occupants. The weather at the landing site is balmy for this time of the year. The forecast calling for just a few clouds at 10,000 feet at landing time and temperatures around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now just two minutes away from the issuance of the undocking command. All of the Soyuz systems in good shape as we uh, are about to embark on the departure of the Soyuz MS-24 from the Rossviet module, beginning the, the journey home for NASA's Laurel O'Hara, Roscosmos Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky, and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya. Command D7 is sent. The 11 D15 is illuminated. Gas 17 is illuminated. S13 is illuminated. We are continuing to work per page 48. Copy. The docking mechanism has been activated on the Soyuz vehicle. Just about 25 seconds away from the issuance of the undocking command, it will take about 90 seconds thereafter for physical Oleg, separation. Uh, time 065230, you are go to put in the command. Put in. Copy. Go to put in the command. Come on, but we don't know. Command has been sent. And the undocking command has been issued. Standing by for physical separation. Copy. The hooks are driving that has held uh, this vehicle in place at the Rossviet module since September 15th. Standing by for attenuation of mechanical connection. Copy. And monitor as separation is happening, the presence of extra object. Copy. Mechanical separation is off. Copy. Undocking confirmed. Right on time at 10.54 p.m. Central Time, 11.54 p.m. Eastern Time, Soyuz MS-24 has broken free from its mooring at the International Space Station. Expedition 70 is complete. Expedition 71 now underway. Copy. Observing the docking port, there are no extraneous items. Copy. And this view from the external engineering camera on the Soyuz as it backs away from the Rossviet module. And by for the operation of the depot with thrusters. Okay, copy. Soyuz MS-24 now undocked from the International Space Station, Laurel O'Hara, Oleg Novitsky, Marina Vasilevskaya, beginning the journey home.
the undocking occurring 260 miles over southern Mongolia. All of the Soyuz systems in good shape, very stable. That center section of the Soyuz is where the crew is strapped into their seats. Novitsky in the center seat, flanked on his right by Laurel O'Hara and on his left by Marina Vasilevskaya. You'll hear uh, the Russian controllers talking to Novitsky from time to time, referencing the call sign Kazbeki. Each uh, Soyuz commander names their craft after a call sign, in this case, a favorite mountain range of Novitsky's. One minute to burn. One minute until an eight second burn of the Soyuz engines, a separation maneuver to begin to increase its opening rate from uh, the International Space Station. Once again, undocking uh, of the Soyuz occurring at 10.54 p.m. Central Time, 11.54 p.m. Eastern Time, as uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station flew 260 miles over Mongolia. Thrusters are off. Copy. Maneuver is in work. Copy. Join the GSO, confirmed. Copy, stand by for the second burn. Copy. That second separation burn referred to there by the Russian flight controllers through an interpreter is a 15 second burn coming up in about 20 seconds from now. Thruster ignition. Separation burn number two underway. Yes, it's the core. Thrusters are off. Copy. Let's put in the V18 command and turn off. And a good uh, pair of separation burns for the Soyuz, now well underway, backing away in increasing uh, velocity from the International Space Station. The command has been sent. Copy, let's go to page 550. Working. For page five zero. Station Moscow on SG-1 uh, regarding Kavade MRM-1. The International Space Station, meanwhile, will soon maneuver back into its post-undocking orientation. Uh, okay, do I need to close Kavade? Uh, the uh, trio on board the Soyuz MS-24 will have a bit of free time before they review uh, descent procedures well in advance of the deorbit burn that uh, is scheduled two hours and 24 minutes from now. I'll let the recording uh, continue.
again, uh, you're looking at the three uh, crew members who have just departed the International Space Station, Laurel O'Hara, the NASA flight engineer, wrapping up 204 days in space and a mission of 86 and a half million statute miles. Oleg Novitsky and Marina Vasilevskaya wrapping up 14 days in space, 12 days aboard the station. And work. Having brought a fresh Soyuz, the MS-25 spacecraft to the station. And this engineering view from uh, the perspective of the Soyuz crew, that cross-haired uh, data camera that you are familiar with from previous Russian operations with Soyuz and Progress vehicles. To the transport position. And a good view as the uh, Soyuz crosses uh, just past uh, the limb of the Earth. Go ahead. Uh, bottle one, one seven one, and bottle two, one seven two. One Soyuz is in closed position. Okay, Oleg, and you can you deactivate the recording six. and the video cameras three, eight, for uh, MPEG-2 and the application. Copy. Uh, unintelligible. TV off, OFF. Okay, copy. Oleg? Brilho. Copy. Middle command. Send command. Seva Otko. Copy. Moving to page 54. Another view of the uh, Soyuz MS-24, which departed the International Space Station just about eight and a half minutes ago. Copy. Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky in the center seat of the uh, descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, is uh, calling out data to the Russian flight control team in Korolev outside of Moscow. At the very top, you see the bulbous-shaped orbital module, and at the bottom with the solar arrays, that is the instrumentation and propulsion module. Some 23 minutes after the deorbit burn, those three sections will pyrotechnically separate. The only section left will be the descent module, pointed in the direction of travel of the descent of the Soyuz through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, forward by that time. Uh, step 12. Or we'll be ready. Downlink link the recorded information. Do I need to downlink the video? Yes, we'll need to downlink that. Uh, okay, downlink files. Uh, that is correct. Moscow Station on SG-1. Go ahead on SG-1. Uh, unintelligible. Uh, yes, you can switch that uh, according to the timeline activity. Uh, okay, we'll do. The Soyuz MS-24 continues its opening rate away from the International Space Station. The deorbit burn to begin uh, the trip out of low Earth orbit for this trio of crew members is scheduled two hours and 18 minutes and 54 seconds from now. 
that deorbit burn scheduled at 1.23 and 53 seconds a.m. Central Time Saturday morning, 2.23 and 53 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. That will be a long four minute, 41 second burn, a braking maneuver, if you will, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second while the Soyuz is at a distance of about 39 kilometers away from the International Space Station. Right after the uh, deorbit burn, that top portion of the Soyuz that you're looking at, called the orbital module, will be depressurized per the plan to set the stage for the pyrotechnic separation of the three components of the Soyuz. The orbital module at the top, the descent module that the crew is strapped into in the center section, and the lower section, which is the instrumentation and propulsion module. That separation is commanded automatically pyrotechnically to enable the descent module to begin uh, its journey into the Earth's atmosphere with the heat shield pointed in the direction of travel to repel temperatures that will build up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, uh, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-24. Good views continuing to be captured by external cameras on the International Space Station as it uh, moves methodically away from the complex, ultimately to a distance of about 39 kilometers from the station for its deorbit burn, a four minute, 41 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engines scheduled two hours and 15 minutes from now. The station and the Soyuz are flying 260 statute miles over the North Pacific, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator.
This is Mission Control Houston continuing to get excellent views of the Soyuz MS-24 as it uh, moves away from the International Space Station about 18 minutes after its undocking from the Rosviet module aboard the Soyuz NASA's Laurel O'Hara, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, and a Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya. We're just about two hours and 11 minutes away from the deorbit burn that will set the stage for the Soyuz descent module's entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 2.17 a.m. Central Time, 3.17 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 12.17 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan on what will be a balmy Saturday afternoon with temperatures around 60 degrees Fahrenheit forecast. Just a few clouds at 10,000 feet, winds out of the southwest at about six knots. It doesn't get much better than that for an early April homecoming for a Soyuz crew. The NASA, Roscosmos, and Rosaviatsa search and recovery team aboard an Antonov 26 aircraft. They're airborne, flying from Karaganda, the staging city, to an interim staging point in Jezkazgan where helicopters, Russian Mi-8 helicopters, are waiting to uh, begin about a 30 to 35 minute flight to the landing zone. Those helicopters will arrive in a circular pattern, essentially like a racetrack, as they await uh, the arrival of the Soyuz under its parachute. Once uh, the Soyuz touches down, the uh, recovery teams will make their way to the capsule ensure that uh, there are no toxic gases emanating from the descent module before they begin uh, the extraction of the crew members, placing them in chairs alongside the capsule so that they can have a few minutes uh, to regain their land legs. Laurel O'Hara coming home after 204 days in space, Novitsky and Vasilevskaya after two weeks in space. After that, the crew members will be carried in those chairs to a nearby inflatable medical tent where they will uh, doff their Sokol launch and entry suits, receive preliminary medical exams, and then be taken uh, to three separate helicopters for a two-hour flight back to Karaganda, where they will split up, O'Hara boarding a NASA jet to fly back to Houston, Novitsky and Vasilevskaya boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to fly back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. This is Mission Control Houston with everything going very smoothly on board the Soyuz MS-24. We will uh, wrap up this portion of our continuous coverage of uh, the return to Earth of Laurel O'Hara, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya. The deorbit burn is scheduled two hours and seven minutes from now. We will be back on the air at 1 a.m. Central Time, 2 a.m. Eastern Time with our deorbit burn and landing coverage and a lot more detail about the timeline that will bring those three crew members home to wrap up this mission of the Soyuz MS-24. So don't wander very far. Come back and rejoin us here at uh, 1 a.m. Central, 2 a.m. Eastern for deorbit and landing coverage for O'Hara, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya. For now, we'll sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.